So it's a cloudy day. Just as soon as I get up here, it starts sprinkling, but it's not supposed to. I trust dark sky, and dark sky says no rain for the next hour as it's starting to rain on me, but it's also stopping. So I'm gonna hope for that to be true. This lighting the smoker in the field really bothers all my Girl Scout parts because in Girl Scouts we learned that you don't ever start a fire in an area like this. You want it to be completely cleared out, not grass around the smoker as I'm lighting it. But um, so forgive my lack of Girl Scout safety measures <laughs> because I'm definitely not following them. So we're trying to get the smoker to light. You all know it's always a challenge for me. See, I put the lighter away. I shouldn't have. My, my uh, pine straw I typically keep in the basement so that it stays dry. But my son, grandson and I are cleaning out the basement and I was trying to get it out of the way. So I put it outside so the pine straw is damper than it usually is when I'm lighting the smoker. But that's a pretty good little flame as the sprinkling rain keeps on going. Bees are usually not happy when it's raining, so this is not the ideal deal time to be inspecting bees, but we're gonna do it anyway because it's supposed to be like this for the entire day. And tomorrow I'm supposed to show this to you. So in the fullness of time and the interest of time, we're gonna just go right ahead with this inspection. Little raindrops be damned. Look at this smoker. It's cooperating. It doesn't smell bad, as bad up here. On this side of the hive that uh, experienced the pesticide kill, um, there were, there's still a little bit of a bad smell, but it's not awful. I listened to Jamie Ellis' talk on the Alabama Extension last night. He said he'd never seen a pesticide kill, which I find absolutely remarkable, because I've seen several. And so he acted a little bit like, Beekeepers say it happens, but it's not a real thing. And I think, come on, Jamie. I mean, I've got pictures of the real thing. But anyway, this was definitely a pesticide kill. There's no way around it, whether Jamie's ever seen one or not. Okay, so now, oh yeah, I better put my veil on. The smoker is lit. Okay, so our first job is to observe the front of the hive and see what we see. So you still see dead bees on the ground down there. But they're not new dead bees. There's a dead, there's a bee in there, sort of, you know, moving dead bodies or maybe bringing a dead body to the, to the hive, to the outside of the hive because they don't keep bodies inside the hive. And the area has expanded. There's more dead bees over here, but, um, but the hive seems calmer and doesn't smell as bad like there's newly dead. So we're going to look and see if we see any hope that the queen is okay. There went a bee with pollen. Hooray! Hooray! All right, everybody watch, see if you see another one, because that one was sort of a quick glance on my part. You may have already seen one because I was looking away at the pile of dead bees. There's another one. You see her right now? Well, she just went under the hive. That was funny. I don't know why she went under the hive. She didn't come back up to come in the entrance. She definitely was bringing in pollen. Um, so we'll watch, see if we see. There's one more. You see her? She's flying around the outside right now. There she goes. Okay, so we are going to go to the back of the hive and now do our inspection. Okay, I'm going to start the inspection by smoking the front of the hive. I'm going to just go pop, pop in the front of the hive and set the smoker down. And the reaction to the bees to the smoke was kind of loud. And bees don't like it when it's rainy weather and the beekeeper comes around. They're like, really? We were having a nice life. Now our goal in opening this hive is to see what we can see as a result of all of the death that's happened. To see how things are going. So first of all, we notice when we open the hive that there are not that many bees on the top of the hive. There are a few, but there are not that many. The population has really been decimated by this pesticide kill. off the boxes all the way down to the brood box in this hive. There's nothing that's been done in this box, you can see. We gave them this box a while back, a couple weeks back. There's new comb in this frame right here, um, and there's full comb in here. This was the one we brought up as a ladder, but they've not done anything else because they've got their workforce is diminished.
Okay, let me take this box off. We'll cover it up. have to break the propolis seal. This is why you don't want to inspect your hive in the winter because you can stop it. Because when you break the propolis seal, the bees don't have a way to redo it. There's not the heat and the resin available on the trees. So this box looks pretty good. There are a lot of bees and they've used a lot of the comb. But we know this is honey, so we're gonna go further down into the box. So I'm going to cover this one up with a hive drape. Now when this swarm was hived, where they moved into was the second box. So we're going to really look at the second box, which is the next one that we come to, because it's where they were raising their brood. They had the bottom box was pretty empty. I don't know if it still is. Oh boy, is this one heavy. Woo! Gracious girls, you've been storing up good honey. This one caught in the box. <laughs> Y'all just experienced the awkwardness of Linda as a beekeeper. <laughs> okay, let me see if you can see the box. I'm not sure you can. Okay. So, let's see what there is to see in this box. Given the cloudy weather and the fact, it's not raining now, but the fact that the the drippy rain started when we got here. I'm surprised these bees are as calm as they're being. Where I typically don't expect to use smoke because of the hive drains. On a day like this, I kind of do expect to use smoke. Okay, we're going to start taking out the second frame from the side. Wow, that's a pitiful hive drape. I need some new ones. big old drones in here. Actually, I'm seeing lots of drones, so it makes me worry about the queen that maybe the impact for her is that she's now relaying drones. But maybe not. We do see a lot of drones. Oh, there's a drone hooked to this frame who's dead, I'm pretty sure. tore off part of the honeycomb bringing this out. And this frame, which is on the side of the hive, is all honey. All honey. And of course it's dripping honey from the, the mess I made. Okay. I feel a little worried to hang this one on the side of the hive. So I think what I'm going to try to do is take out the next one, hang it on the side of the hive, and then we'll remember that the third one is the last one to go in. They may only have honey in this box now. I wonder where they put their brood. This again is all honey. <clears throat> all honey. Look at those pretty great big old honey cells. Really nice. All right, so this one I'm going to, all right, I see brood in the next box. So this one I'm going to hang on the side of the box, but right now I'm going to set it over here and put this one back in the box with its torn honeycomb. Cover it up. And put frame number three on our rack. I have a little bee on me. I just drone. And then over the hive, I can smell the dead bees. Oh, it's sure as bad as last week. Okay, this is an interesting frame because it's mostly honey. So that's all honey. But right there is brood. So I'm going to look at the brood without you all being able to collect something. I can see what's in here. 
starts brewed and then honey. Very little of this is brewed. What I'd really like to see is an egg. And I do not. It's brewed, which is light colored. Man, it's not all that old. But just that bare little bit of it. So let's see what else we see in here. So our queen may have stopped laying in response to this poison, or she could be dead. And these two frames are joined together, and they pull them out together. Because I didn't catch this in time, and that means that there's not a way to repair this damage this far into the Oh, good, the sun. Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. All right, this is older brood. I'm going to look in those empty cells and see what's in the empty cell. Oh, they're eggs! They're eggs! They're eggs! They're eggs! There are eggs. All right, I'm going to see if you can see them. They're in the top of this triangle. This triangular opening, and there's a reflection on the screen, so I can't see what you can see. Let's see. Make sure you see the triangular area. Here's my camera. All right, in those open holes are eggs, but I can't hold it with the sun. It's not in the right place for you to see them. And this is heavy with the two frames. But this is good, our queen is still laying. There's honey on here, as well as brood. And on the back side is really pretty brood. So this, I don't know if y'all read my blog or not after the pesticide hive, but my blog uh, referenced an article from GBA in which they said that two things happen after a pesticide kill. Either the hive just survives it and they go on despite the huge loss of bees. And the other is that the, bee, the bees have brought in pollen that contains the pesticide and so the bees continue to die. But I think it has looked like the bees are not continuing to die. And, and so I have hope for this hive. I'm feeling very hopeful. I don't think it's gonna be anything like what it could have been without the pesticide kill, but good news that we saw, I saw eggs. I know you all didn't see them, but good news that I saw eggs. And also the color of the brood, like this brood is light colored, which is light biscuit and lets us know that it was capped in the last week, which means the queen laid the eggs probably about the time that the pesticide kill had just taken the biggest toll on her, her hive. So that's really pretty brood. And look at the bee with pollen on her legs. I hope y'all can see her. See, there's a bee with pollen on her legs right there, walking up the frame. Let me turn it around. Let's look on the other side. We have to be very careful because this is a foundationless frame. And look, they have only hooked it to the top in one area, which is right and about three quarters to the right. <laughs> But there's brood in there and and there's light brood and then there's some drone brood over here on the your right side of this of the frame 
The right side of the frame has drone brood up at the top and the left side has good worker brood. So we can be real happy about this hive. I think it's gonna survive. It also has lots of bees still in it. We're not looking at small numbers of bees left in the hive. They're actually, you know, I want you to look down here and see. See, there are lots of bees in this hive. So I'm not worried. I think we're gonna be okay. You know, lose a little in honey production because of this pesticide kill. Um, I wanna go back and listen to Jamie Ellis' talk again, but he said more than once that people reported to him that there were pesticide kills, but he had never seen one in 30 years of beekeeping, which I find remarkable. But maybe in Florida where he lives, there are not so many um, poison sprayed, who knows? Okay, so now we gotta find out which box is, which hive is, which frame is number three. And it would go right here, so I'm gonna push this over. And make room for it. And we're gonna get frame number three. And put it back in this hive and go away happy. I'm happy, I hope y'all are happy. Okay, oh, a lot of bees fell on my foot when I picked that up. Okay, let's see if we can go back down in here without doing more damage again. I'm not killing anybody. I'm not killing anybody on this end. They didn't like falling on my foot. Now they're crawling on my pants. But at least they're crawling up the outside of my pants and not the inside of my pants. This is the good news. See them all down here crawling up my pants? <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm gonna put this hive back together and we are gonna feel, re I feel relieved. I hope you all do, it was so sad last week. I just thought I was gonna die and couldn't think about anything else. But this feels hopeful to me. And like, there's possibility things might be okay. But this hive, oh, it's heavy. I'm looking at all those bees that came off that frame that I had hanging. I don't know quite how to think about them. They want to go back in the hive, so I may give them a second to do that before I start doing any sliding. Come on, girls. Every time the wind blows, I can smell the dead bees, but it's sure not as bad as last week. I'm going to go gently down. I hope I don't kill anybody. And slide forward like a bulldozer. <laughs> Encourage them to get out of the way. Out of the way, girls. Here comes a big heavy box. And it is one heavy box. Okay. Probably killed a few, but it doesn't seem like a powerful a riot anyway. Okay, so we take this pillowcase off and put the other box back on. Oh. And that's the good news. grandson used to say, yay, yay, yay. That's what I want to say after this. Yay, yay, yay. So it may be that the pesticide kill was because of a plant that they visited and that now the rain that they had in between the pesticide kill and our discovering it uh, washed the bad poison off and so we're in better shape. So that's the end of that box. And we will stop for now and go on to the next one. Okay, so now we're going to start at the front of this hive. This is the big tall hive and we're going to look to see if we see anybody coming in with pollen on their legs. This hive definitely needs a haircut. It's a little harder with the robber screen with this one with window screen because we can't see through it as well. I can't see through it at all. But I do see a bee in there with pollen on our legs, but I'd love for us to see one up on the top. Everybody watch. But one thing we do notice, I mean, you're not just looking for pollen. I know it's always my agenda, but, but 
the other thing to notice is the bees are fairly calm. I'm standing right in front of the hive. They're not dive bombing me. They're doing their job. They're flying into their hive. They're getting what they need to do. They really hate it when the beekeeper stands in front of the beehive because I'm blocking the flight path. It's not that they hold me any particular animosity toward me. It's just I'm blocking the flight path. Um, and right now, I'm, oh, there's some. Is that a bee with pollen right there? Just pollen on one leg, but not the other. Must have been a pretty skimpy source of pollen. But at least there's pollen. That's what we need to see, right? If she turns, maybe we'll see. She does have it on the other leg. Okay, so we've satisfied my one thing that I look for, in addition to just the general spirit of the hive. And now we're going to go pack here and inspect this hive um, and see what we see. Last time we really didn't. I was upset about the other hive and didn't do much. Okay, I'm going to take my smoker, which is still lit. Amazing in these in these inspections. So far, I've managed to keep the smoker lit. Okay, so pop, 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 pop at the front door. It's not very lit, but as I'm popping it, it's getting more enthusiastic. Aha, there it goes. Alright, and set it down in the sea of weeds, and we'll see what we see inside this hive. Okay, I forgot to put the rock back on the other hive, so I'll do that. And take the rock off of this hive. I have a bee that's very not happy with me that's sitting on my veil at the moment. So we're going to open the top of this hive. This box is likely not to have anything going on because the nectar flow has now ended and we sort of put the last box on the day before. Now just for your own, the reason to have two hives is exactly this, the comparison. Look at the difference in the number of bees on the top of this hive compared to how few bees were on top of the other hive. And it just shows you that the relative population in this hive is much bigger and different. I don't know if y'all can see them, but there are a lot of bees up there. Okay. okay. Now we'll take off the inner cover. This box, just like I said, is just pretty empty. They did put, build some new comb in those two, last two frames. You can see it from where you're standing. And there's, you know, they've got stuff going on in five frames. So we'll see what happens when I lift it off, how heavy it is it. This drape still has a, a drone from the other hive. I think it's fun to pick them up for you all because it's kind of cool to see, you know, that it's not hard to pick up a drone and they're not going to sting you. And it makes you feel a whole lot more comfortable picking up bees. But I, I think I ought to put him over here because he doesn't really belong in the hive. Although what does happen with, bee, with drones particularly is they do more drifting than, other, um, than the other bees. They might go into a hive that isn't theirs and be welcomed when they got there. Okay, so I've loosened that. I need to get this rock out of my way so that I can make my back not be work too hard. Oh. Yeah, it's not terribly heavy. So there's a little bit of honey in there, but not a lot. Now this hive is completely full except for one frame of honey. They've done real well filling that up. Looks like maybe two frames or one's skimpy and one's not got anything in it. But we're going to take this off as well. We didn't really inspect this hive last time. All we did was steal honey from them. I'll be too OLD to do beekeeping after a while. Just from the lifting part. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, let's see, I don't think you can see this anymore. Okay, so I'll put a, this still looks like all the frames in here are honey. So we're gonna put, not look at it either. 
We'll harvest again from this hive because it started out so strongly, but more than likely won't harvest from them until like end of June or something. This frame, we're going to, this box, we're going to look at it for frames that might be interesting for us to see. Um, it's, it's nice to note that this particular hive has not had um, been affected by the same pesticide issue that the other hive was affected by. Um, and I need another object. Okay, so this is frame one. We're gonna take out frame two like we always do. These frames all have honey at the top, but these tend to do that even if they have, uh, even if they're raising brood in the frame, the honey's gonna be at the top. And somebody's gonna say, Linda, you had a yellow hot pot tool. Why do you have a red one now? It's because I dropped the yellow one somewhere in there and I don't know where it is. And it was just on top when I started, or when I started with this one, I start with whatever one is available. This frame feels light, which probably means there's going to be brood in it. Well, we have, haha, <laughs> funny, a little bit of a drone brood. All right, so this was all, these frames were all made for honey. And they're so they're big cells, so they've got some drone brood in here. You can see some where the drone is not capped completely. And then they have some nice honey on the top of the frame to feed, feed them with. Okay, so we're gonna hang this one on the side of the hive and keep looking. Again, this is a hive where the bottom deep has foundation in it and more likely where they're growing regular brood. And I have to say this out loud to myself every time I'm in this hive, because my personal hives, this is a Maba hive, it's the only hive up here that's a Maba hive. And so my personal hives don't have foundation and don't have deeps. And so my queens tend to lay their brood all the way through the hive, their worker brood, because they can build whatever size cells they need. But these guys don't have the choice, so they're building drone brood in all these big cells because it's available to them. Now I do see some worker brood in the next frame, which is gonna make me happy because I really don't wanna go into the bottom box if we don't have to. I'm a big believer in when you go into a hive, you want to interfere as little as possible to keep the process going and not interfere and not um, change their life around, you know, rearrange their furniture as it were. So this box has worker brood on this side and worker brood on this side and a queen cup. I don't know if we've seen a queen cup in these inspections. Right here is a queen cup. Let me get, make sure you can see it. This is a queen cup right here. That's a queen cup. It doesn't have anything in it, but it just has them ready in case they wanted to build a new queen cell. They, they've got to start and they picked an area where there's not any other honeycomb so that a queen could be a great big old peanut shaped cell and it'd be just fine. All right, let's see if there's anything else interesting to see on this frame. Polished out cells, which they always do before they lay eggs. They clean the cell just thoroughly, but I don't see any eggs. But this worker brood in this frame is fairly young. This worker brood is beige, light biscuit, so it's about seven days old. 
Well, that was cool to see a queen cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not worried about a queen cup being there. It's what bees do for sort of like an insurance policy to make sure they can always make a queen if they need to. So they'll stash little queen cups throughout there. And this is very interesting because we put this rubber band on this frame. They'll stash queen cups throughout their um, brood area. I didn't finish the sentence. We put this rubber band on this hive a long time ago and they have not chewed it off, which I find very interesting. I'm gonna leave it there, but I wanna show you something that they did with the fact that the rubber band is there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a de they've depressed the area right under the rubber band. See right there, there's a definite curve to accommodate the rubber band, which is kind of funny. So since I'm not sure what you see, because when I look at the camera, I just see a reflection. I'm gonna go very slowly, but this is where the curve is, if you can see my finger. And I'll hold it out further. There's a depression right there. I'm gonna look in these empty cell and see if the queen is filling them up. The answer is no, she isn't. I don't know if we should worry about her or not, but you know the natural flow has stopped and, um, and so she may not feel quite as determined to build up brood because the natural flow has stopped. Because the reason they build up the brood is to have a good enough crew to, to go get the nectar. They don't just do it for the heck of it. And interestingly, on June 21st, which is coming up in a few weeks, the queen knows that it's the summer solstice and then she really does stop slower laying down. This is a lot of honey and some brood. Again, a bunch of empty cells not being used. Wait, 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 I can see some eggs, that would be so exciting. But no, I mean, these are all empty cells polished out and ready. A lot of empty cells polished out and ready. I'm gonna trip over the rock but they don't have fruit in them. Now here's another area where if they wanted to make a queen cup, they might. Okay, let's see. All right, we're gonna put this box back together. And this hive is doing fine, so we can feel good about it. Put the second frame back where it belongs. Very gently, nobody got killed. Remove the frame rack, remove the hive drape, and then I gotta put the, the boxes back on. I'm gonna back this up a little bit so that I'll be between you and the, maybe I can move it over here. I just need not to hurt my back picking up that heavy box, which is next. Okay. I hate it when that happens when the hive drape comes too but it's so worth it to me to use the hot drive that those small things that happen don't bother me all that much. Because most beekeepers, when they're doing inspections and they're not using hot drape, they open a box and spray the top of it with smoke, smoke the top of the box, and then they open it. And I don't have any need to do that. Part of that is experience, and part of it is um, the hive drive. Like I said before, I really hate it for you all. I don't, I don't hate it for you all, but I wish for you all that you could smell through the video because the smell of these dead bees is not something that you forget. And 
when I was walking up to see the hive the week that I discovered the, the pesticide kill, I knew it the minute I started walking up the hill because I could smell it. But down here, where the inner covering is, whew, Okay, so that's the end of that box. I can want to start by looking and seeing who's flying in. We've never seen bees flying in with pollen in this hive, so I'll be shocked if we see it today. But they do seem calm and happy, and they're more on the front of the hive than we're used to seeing. So it means that somebody's growing up inside. They were raising young, and you know this is good. The catch will be to see what are they doing inside the hive in terms of what they've used. You'll remember that they were only in five frames in this hive, and they've consistently stayed in five frames in this hive. So one of our challenges when we look at it is to see if we can see any effort they've made to grow. And we've had a kind of rainy week, and they may not have. They may still be in five frames. Um, this is just gonna be a slow growing hive, and this will be a hive that we'll end up feeding some honey to, maybe even the next time we come, um, depending on what their supplies, their stores look like in there. Um, so far though, still no bees with pollen. I don't see any, do you? I'm still looking, still looking, still looking, but I don't see any. This is an interesting little queen. So maybe she doesn't, you know, require as much bee bread as other bees. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so, okay, well, let's go look and see what's inside the hive. All we know from the outside is that it looks calm and peaceful. That is the one thing we've learned. Okay, so I'm going to take my smoker. Which is doing almost nothing. Okay, I'm going to smoke, smoke by the front door. Not doing much, but maybe they got the idea that I'm coming. <laughs> Not very emphatically. Somebody is suggesting they might come into the house. I didn't feel like that's a knock on the door. I just suggested. Okay, first thing I gotta do is undo the strap that we have on the hive because the winds are pretty strong up here and we don't want the hive to blow over. So strapping it straps it to its cinder blocks, not likely to blow over. So immediately what we see are, like we've seen every time with this hive, no bees on the inner cover. I think there might have been one. Um, and they're earwigs. Has anybody ever seen an earwig? I'm gonna show you an earwig. Earwigs are often in beehives. That one left. Let me see if I can show them to you. Though. They're the most, if you haven't seen one before, they're very interesting insects. He's right in the corner. It's right there. See him? He's got, oh, looks like a big, huge jaw. And he's an earwig, which they're not bad, but they're often in the beehive. Bee, I mean, you see everything in the beehive. You see cockroaches, you see earwigs, you see um, oh, what black widow spiders, um, other kinds of spiders, small hive beetles, which we haven't seen yet. And guess what? They're not doing a thing in second in box number two. Are we surprised? I'm not really. The nectar flow quit this week. They would need nectar to be able to build wax in this box, and they're not. But just for ceremony, I'm going to cover it up with a hive drape after I cover this one up with a hive drape. Ta da! Okay. So let's see what's in here to see. Speaking of hard on your back. This hive is because I have to lean over the whole time because it's so much further down, I guess, because <coughs> we don't go into the, the bottom box in either of the other hives. Absolutely beautiful brood pattern on both sides. Look at that pretty brood pattern. And on the other side, she's doing really well.
That's nice worker brood throughout that whole frame. Let me see if there are any eggs on this edge. There's some little tiny brood all in here toward the bottom in those open cells. I don't see any eggs, but still, that's nice. Okay, this is our second frame, so we're gonna hang it on the frame rack. See, I took it out of the hive like that. Calm little hive. No fussing about my being here. It's kind of nice of them. I feel welcome. I know it's hard when Gulliver stops by. Another pretty brood pattern. This one goes end to end. Very nice. We'll look in those holes in just a minute. Backside just the same. Very nice. And this one is not attached. Not, yeah, it is a little bit, so I gotta be, but I still gotta be careful. I gotta get my hair out of my eyes. I wore a bandana today to help with that. It didn't seem to help. Okay, let me see if I can see any eggs or anything interesting to show you. Just for curiosity, there's a bee with pollen on her legs. I don't know if y'all can see her or not, but there she is. So somebody does come in with pollen on their legs in this hive. We just never see them. See the queen. The queen is right there. I'll hold it out far enough that maybe y'all can see, but there's the queen. There she is. Isn't she pretty? Pretty queen. Yay. Okay. So I think we've done what we need to do in here. They are still going. The queen is still there. We actually saw her. Amazing enough. And we're going to put this back together and end our inspection. Put our second frame back where it belongs. Very gently because the queen was on the, the queen was on this one, so I'm gonna mark it. So maybe we look sometimes you'll we'll find her on the same frame the next time. This box takes no effort to lift up because there's nothing in it. Zero. And one thing I think you've seen twice in this inspection, but when you hang a frame on the side of the hive. Then you end up with bees hanging out, like bees are doing down here, as they came off of the frame. Now they're bees that belong in the hive. They're nurse bees and not foragers. So hopefully they just climb right on back up into the hive. Usually they do. So all that's left for us to do is put the strap back around the hive we will call it a day. Here comes the strap. Come over here and tighten it. Okay. There it goes. Alrighty. We have done our inspection. Thank you for staying with me for the inspection. <laughs>